tonight I'll be talking about a probably a, a pet love of mine, which is uh, hemp building. Um, anyone who knows me uh, knows that is certainly one of my specialities. Um, I'm just going to share my screen with just bear with me a moment. Uh, Bear with me a moment. I'm just getting this set up. Kirsty, no problem at all. Okay. Um, oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, can people see my slideshow? Yep. All perfect. Fantastic. So um, I've been given 15 minutes tonight. And so what I thought I would do is talk to you uh, 15 reasons why you should build with hemp. Uh, and there's lots of really fantastic reasons. Um, so first of all, uh, the hemp plant itself is an amazing plant. Um, you can get uh, fiber from the outside of the plant uh, for hemp building with hempcrete. We use the uh, herd, which is the inside of the stem. Uh, you can also get hemp seeds, uh, which are a great nutritional food and uh, CBD oil for medicinal purposes. Um, so it really is a, an amazing plant. Um, one of the things uh, is that it's a very fast growing plant uh, and it can go from uh, planting to harvest in about three to four months, uh, which means that it can be grown between other crops. Um, and Preferably for building, we would use a fibre crop, uh, but uh, we can also use for building uh, crops which are grown for seed. Uh, and uh, they primarily grow seed crops in Tasmania. And this year, they've actually set up a processing plant in Tasmania to take the stalks from those seed crops and actually process that into hemp herd for building. So that's really fantastic that they're now actually using what for the farmers would have been a waste product. And they're now turning that into not only usable building material, but an extra income stream uh, for the farmers who are growing that. So um, that's fantastic. Now, another second reason uh, to be building with hemp is that hemp is actually a uh, very low embodied energy product. Uh, in fact, in the growing of the hemp, uh, it basically uses low water and fertilizer. Uh, and it's best if the hemp fiber can actually be grown and processed locally. Uh, it's quite a lightweight fiber, um, but that also means that it's very bulky. Uh, so unfortunately, transport is one of the uh, large costs in uh, building with hemp. So it would be significant if uh, around Australia, we can actually get some local growing and processing. And it's very interesting that it seems that the places which were uh, further, further out and had the greater difficulty in sourcing hemp have actually been now the leaders and innovators in setting up local processing, and that's uh, Western Australia and Tasmania, who uh, are both now doing local growing and processing. Uh, there's also processing due to come online in uh, Victoria. And uh, unfortunately, at the moment, the processing plant we have at Dungog in New South Wales is not doing fibre, uh, which is very sad, actually, because originally it was um, one of the best sources um, locally for us uh, building in Sydney. Um, one of the other great things about building with hemp is that it is carbon neutral. And look, it's probably, the, the, the research has actually shown that it's carbon negative, but it's one of those things that I don't like to overstate things. And I think that to be on the conservative side to say that it's carbon neutral. And it does that uh, through a number of different methods. 
Um, one is that the hemp fibre itself, um, it actually is full of carbon. And so when that carbon is used, that hemp fibre is used in the building, it uh, is that the hemp, sorry, the carbon in that hemp fibre is locked up in the building. Now, when we build with hemp, uh, mostly what I'll be talking about tonight is actually hempcrete. And hempcrete is made from a mixture of the hemp fiber, which I showed you before, which is the inside of the hemp stalk. So the outside of the hemp stalk is used for, which are the long um, fibers are uh, used for things like clothing and sheets and those sorts of things. Uh, but it's the woody inside of the stalk that we use for building. So that is basically chopped into uh, what looks like a, a small sort of bark chip. Uh, and if you look very carefully at the hemp fibres, um, there are sort of little hollow fibres, but they're also very strong um, and quite durable. They have quite a high silica content, uh, which means they don't break down. So all of those things make them really ideal for building. So the hemp fibres are mixed with a lime-based binder and they are put into a formwork, as you can see here on the screen. And basically the walls are cast in one monolithic um, uh, area, um, going up usually in rises of about 600 millimetres. So down the bottom, you can see that's a, um, a garage building um, that has just had all the, the hemp cast. Um, and you can see that there, there's no gaps between the walls. It's all done in uh, one, one big wall in effect. So the lime, um, interestingly, it starts out as cal calcium carbonate. So if anyone's into a little bit of chemistry, um, I've, I've got the, the, the lime cycle up there for you to have a look at. So basically um, the calcium carbonate uh, is heated and in that heating process, it gives off carbon dioxide, which uh, after that you get calcium oxide, which is commonly called quicklime. Then what happens next is uh, water is added, uh, which is called slaking the lime and you get calcium hydroxide um, and it can be done into either slaked or hydrated lime, depending on how that process is done. So it's usually the hydrated lime which we are mixing with the hemp fiber. So the hemp fiber is effectively our bulking agent and insulation, and the lime is like the glue that holds it all together. So that hydrated lime, uh, it's mixed with water, uh, and then it carbonates, which means it takes on carbon dioxide and gives off um, water and that's the, the drying and taking on of carbon dioxide. So effectively what's happening is that that carbon dioxide, which was given off at the beginning when the uh, limestone was heated, is then reabsorbed over the life of that material. And one of the great things about lime is it actually just keeps getting harder and harder. Um, so uh, it has a very, very long lifespan. And that, the lime actually goes back to calcium carbonate, which is your limestone. So in effect, you're creating a, 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 uh, a fiber limestone composite there. Um, so if we add up, uh, it's acknowledged that certainly that uh, energy is used in creating the lime. And certainly there is not an, as much energy or heat uh, that's put into it as is creating, um, as is used when we create uh, cement. Um, but if we add up the carbon dioxide, which is locked up in the hemp fibres, together with the carbon dioxide, which is reabsorbed um, from the air when the material uh, carbonates, uh, we actually end up with a better than carbon neutral material, which is absolutely fantastic when we really should be looking at what all of our building materials are doing. Uh, another fantastic thing um, is that hemp is a natural material. So I actually came to hempcrete from a uh, natural building materials background 
looking at using natural fibres, um, using natural earth. And some of the fantastic things about natural materials are that they tend to be low embodied energy um, because there's usually less processing involved in them. They also uh, tend to be more renewable uh, because they come from natural sources, although not all because things like stone, of course, aren't renewable, but things like earth, I mean, there's a, a huge amount of clay on the earth. Um, and they also tend to be low toxicity. And so I, I think that we really should be looking at building more with these natural materials because of this renewability, low toxicity, and just trying to avoid a reliance on highly processed materials um, coming from fossil fuels um, and not using as much plastic because uh, that also then helps uh, at the end of the life of the building. Um, one of the fantastic things uh, about hempcrete is that it is recyclable. So if we're looking at the total life cycle of a building, not only do we have to look at the energy that goes into creating the material, transporting the material, um, the energy that's used during the life and use of the building. But we also need to look at, well, what happens at the end of the life of that building? So one of the great things is that for hempcrete, um, you can actually crush the material uh, and reuse it 10% uh, of the old material in remaking more hempcrete. Um, or in fact, it can be composted, uh, being a natural material uh, once that's broken down. Uh, so the, the slide I've got here at the moment shows uh, the top house is a house that was built uh, out at Armadale. And the bottom one is um, a lovely little cottage which is being built um, near uh, Mullumbimby. Uh, and just to show you also the versatility of what you can do with this material, I've got a beautiful curved corner. So this is going into a house where uh, the hempcrete walls will be left unrendered. Uh, and so it's a beautiful uh, featured corner there showing those um, wonderful natural fibres uh, in the wall. Um, so uh, as a... As we heard in our last presentation, all building designers love a good thermal image. Look, one of the fantastic things and one of the real selling points for using hempcrete uh, is its thermal performance. Uh, so good thermal performance means lower energy bills and lower cost to run the building. So the more that we can do this using sort of passive methods, the less energy we're having to use to put into our buildings. So uh, a hempcrete uh, building of with walls uh, 250 millimetres thick um, gives an R value of 3.3 and a 300 millimetre thick wall will give us an R4, which are really good values for, for our walls. You can also use hemp uh, in the ceiling uh, hempcrete in the ceiling, but it's a much lighter mix, so it gives you much better R values. Um, I'll just go back a bit also. You can also use hemp insulation bats. Now, this uh, top picture there is uh, showing some hemp insulation bats. Um, that is actually using the outside fibre from the hemp plant. Uh, unfortunately, at the moment, these are not manufactured in Australia, um, but I'm certainly hoping that in the future uh, we will be using the hemp fibre we have here to manufacture insulation bats because not only do they provide good insulation, um, they're not, um, they don't create those sort of itchy, irritating um, res uh, effects that you get from dealing with fibreglass. Uh, they also have a really good properties in terms of regulation of moisture, which synthetic insulation products don't. And the insulation bats also have really good acoustic properties. So let's hope that in the future, not only will we have uh, hempcrete walls, uh, 
but we might also be able to be putting hemp insulation in our ceilings. So that was a trial ceiling I actually did at my house um, where I put some uh, hemp insulation in just to see how well it would work. So back onto our thermal performance. Um, some really, really interesting research has been carried out in relation to hempcrete. And they've actually found that the performance of hempcrete in terms of its temperature regulation properties are better than what the R rating would indicate from sort of the, the, the static sort of testing. Now, part of this has to do with the hygrothermal behaviour of the hempcrete. And what that involves is the hempcrete's ability to take on and re-release water vapour. And what that does is that that actually allows the hempcrete to act like a phase change material in that when it takes on that water vapour, it also takes on um, the heat and when it is re-released, heat is then given off. Um, and so that actually provides extra assistance in creating a very even um, thermal temperature. Um, so I've got here some pictures. This is actually the first hempcrete house that I built, uh, which was I built for myself. Um, and that actually is what got me started on the journey of hempcrete uh, and looking at what uh, a fantastic sort of material it was. So as I said before, I started coming at things from a natural building material and I was looking for what natural building material would you know, meet as many of the properties I was after in terms of good thermal performance, a little bit of thermal mass, easy to build with, um, and certainly hempcrete uh, ticked all the boxes. So the, the pictures you can see here have been taken. Uh, it was the, the middle of winter. Uh, it was, uh, as you can see from outside, the lowest temperature there is about 5.8 degrees outside. Uh, and we're, we're uh, going at about 21 degrees inside. So that's actually, I'm pretty happy with that considering that um, the house has actually no heating and doesn't also use any heating in summer. So using both the hempcrete walls uh, good thermal uh, envelope and uh, solar passive design has been able to create um, a good um, thermal performance for the building. Uh, interestingly, in these um, images, you can see how uh, I've actually managed to get uh, really good, <laughs> no gaps between my, my uh, ceiling insulation and the walls. Um, they're showing a nice even color there. Uh, what you can see though is the windows. So they are in fact double glazed windows, but they are standard in aluminium frame. And so the images are actually showing that I'm uh, losing more heat through the frame than I was through the double glazing. Uh, and the bottom picture, so the, the two uh, pictures with the yellow walls are actually taken from the inside looking out. And the bottom picture is actually taken from outside. And that yellow line you can see on the outside of the wall is the edge of the concrete slab. So back when I built this, I wasn't doing slab edge insulation on my buildings, which I'm very much encouraging my clients to do now. Uh, and you can see very, very clearly the heat is coming not through the walls, but it's coming through the edge of the concrete slab. Uh, and I'm also losing quite a lot through the window frames. Um, so that's sort of really interesting. Um, the other great thing about hempcrete is it also has a little bit of thermal mass. So that helps in the temperature buffering by providing that sort of thermal inertia. Um, and for the hempcrete, what they're looking at is uh, it has about 1,400 to 1,550 joules per kilogram. Now, to try and put that into some perspective, uh, water, which is has a very high thermal mass, uh, is 4,200. Uh, but a concrete block, which we would normally consider has quite a lot of thermal mass, is 1,000 joules per kilogram. Uh, brick is 800 and timber... Um, Oh, sorry, I can't. Sorry, steel is about 480. So 
Um, looking also then at the thermal envelope, hempcrete is really good at giving you a well-sealed building. Now, this is for a couple of reasons. One is because the walls are sort of a monolithic wall, you don't have lots of gaps between different materials. So another one of the great things about hempcrete is that it's one material that can replace, it replaces your external cladding, it replaces your insulation, it replaces your vapour barrier, vapour barrier, um, vapour permeable building wrap, it replaces your interior lining. So this one material is doing all of those things. And so what it means is instead of having lots of gaps between all your different building materials, um, you have this one um, gap-free wall. Uh, now, I've also got a picture here showing hempcrete being installed by spray installation. Uh, and one of the great things about that is you can see it up and around those LVL rafters. And that by having that sprayed around those rafters, we've got no gaps there at all. The other thing is that hempcrete actually can build buildings up to passive house standard. Uh, passive house uh, buildings have been built with hempcrete in Ireland, the UK, um, Belgium, and there's one currently being built in Tasmania at the moment. So the lower picture there is actually um, the hempcrete house in Ireland being built. And you can see they've got their slab based insulation there. So that's a, a really good detail we need to, need to remember. Uh, and it's just really a matter of making sure you get your air tightness right between your, your hempcrete and your windows and slab. Uh, and in these circumstances, they will usually use the internal render as the airtight layer to uh, achieve those low air change standards that are required to um, reach passive house. Um, so I was talking before also uh, about the vapour permeability of hempcrete. Um, so that is a benefit, not just in terms of its ability um, to, to do uh, like a phase change material, but also what it means is that we don't have problems with condensation buildup inside our houses. Uh, and just to have a look at the, the vapour permeability, so the, the vapour diffusion resistance of hempcrete is 4.84. And if we compare that to uh, a really good um, vapour permeable building wrap, which is the Proctor Wrap EnviroSeal, uh, it has uh, a vapour permeability of 4 to 4.55. Um, but if we compare that to something like plasterboard, uh, that's 1.67. Um, plywood 0 0.1 and plastic paint 0 0.06. So you can have a look and sort of see that hempcrete is right up there in terms of its vapour permeability, but it's amazing that we can get that vapour permeability, also that air tightness, um, all coming from a natural material. But in order to maintain that vapour permeability, we need to also ensure that the renders that are used are vapour permeable. And so generally we'll use a uh, lime render on the outside, which you can see um, that's going on there in the bottom photo. You can also use on internally, uh, you can use a, um, a clay render. Uh, clay is very good also at um, managing moisture. Uh, and the picture on the left is uh, actually has used a natural gypsum plaster um, there. Um, okay. Uh, another one of the great things about hempcrete is that um, it actually provides really healthy indoor air environments. It's interesting to note that the first approved hempcrete house that was done in the United States was built in North America by an architect for his daughter because she was suffering from multiple chemical sensitivities and he built uh, the family house out of hemp. Um, so that's really interesting. So uh, the lime that's used in the hemp means that um, 
it's uh, the lime prevents mold, uh, as well as the vapor permeability of the walls preventing condensation buildup um, and the, the low toxicity of it. So can, can create really good, even humidity in the, in the houses, no mold. And that, that ability of the hempcrete to create uh, and maintain uh, even humidity has led to some interesting applications of hempcrete. Um, there was a facility in the UK where, which was the uh, storage facility for a number of museums. And they actually ended up retrofitting the, the storage sheds with hempcrete to deal with the moisture because as you can understand, a lot of artifacts and um, uh, historic items need to be kept uh, at a regular uh, temperature and humidity. And they were able to do that with the hempcrete without having to use um, mechanical sources to do that. Um, so uh, if we also have a look, um, fire resistance. Uh, interestingly, uh, I've actually had the, the privilege of doing uh, a design for a hempcrete house for a um, a house that was lost in the recent bushfires. Um, and it's really great that the, the owners are choosing to rebuild out of hempcrete. Uh, and certainly it was the fire resistant properties as well as the environmental and thermal performance that led those clients to choose hempcrete. Um, you can see here on the right, there is um, uh, a, a demonstration wall and that black patch there is where a blowtorch has been held up to uh, the hempcrete wall. So hempcrete will not ignite, it will not spread flame and it's really fantastic also at provide not spreading heat, so providing insulation. Um, so the hempcrete uh, has been rated up to BAL FZ which is uh, a 303030 30 rating, but it's also been tested up to a 60 minute rating. It, it got uh, 73 minutes, that's a 300 thick wall, got 73 minutes for stu structural, in structural uh, integrity and insulation. Uh, and the, the other pictures you can see on the left are, uh, this is a, a hemp house down at uh, Nelligan. Uh, so you can see it up close, it's a couple of, probably about eight weeks after the bushfires went through and things are starting to regrow. But in the bottom picture, you can see that house in the background uh, and you can see that basically the land up to it was completely burnt. Um, so the area around that house was subject to the, um, uh, what they call now the Black Summer bushfires. Uh, and sadly, the neighbouring house actually burnt down. So... The reason that the hempcrete house survived was that the owner um, was there. They had water tanks, they had their pumps, uh, they were defending, they had uh, a good asset protection zone. Uh, but talking to the owner, she was certainly reassured that the house was made from hempcrete and her plan was that if she couldn't defend outside, she was going to retreat to the house as her protection. So... Um, and uh, I've actually, there's a house uh, that I designed currently being built at Blackheath, uh, which is in a Bell FZ zone. So yes, hempcrete can be built and approved in a flame zone. Um, another one of the great properties of hempcrete is uh, acoustic insulation. Uh, you can see the bottom photo, it's actually being used for a, a music studio on the North Coast. Um, so they've actually left the walls unrendered because the acoustic performance is better uh, without there being a, a render on there. Uh, and the top photo is, this is actually the first approved hempcrete house uh, in Australia. This is done at uh, Table Cape uh, in Northern Tasmania. Uh, and I visited that house um, not long after it was built. And I was really, really struck by just how amazingly sort of quiet it is inside because this house actually overlooks Bass Strait and really cops the weather. And so just feeling how the, the acoustics of it sort of just made a really sort of calm feeling house were fantastic. 
other great things for hempcrete is it's termite and vermin resistant. Um, but that doesn't mean that we don't need to still ensure that we have our termite protection uh, in place. But what it does mean is that the termites don't like to eat the hempcrete because of the lime. And also the hemp has a high silica content. Um, so they don't like that. Uh, another great thing about hempcrete is that it's really compatible with standard building construction. And so you can, you can get uh, trades um, on site and it's something they can sort of work with and understand. And the, the, I sort of compare it to sort of greater difficulty with other natural building materials like um, straw bale or rammed earth, where it's much more difficult to run your services. So the great thing about hempcrete is that you can use, you can do it around a standard timber frame. So this timber frame here was just made offsite uh, in a timber frame factory. The only difference we had is that we had to use diagonal strap bracing. We couldn't use sheet bracing. And that's because the hempcrete uh, is, goes around both sides of the frame. But you can see here that we've put conduit in and just run our services. Uh, that's a power box there. Um, and it, it just means that it's really easy for trades, other trades to sort of come in and work with the hempcrete, um, which is just really, really useful. I think that's one of the reasons why hempcrete is becoming of the natural building materials, one of the more mainstream ones. Now, quite an unusual one to, to put in relation to building. One of the great advantages, I would say, is actually community building. Uh, and that, that really means two things. One, the community building a house, um, but also building community between people as well. Um, now, hempcrete can be built, um, you know, commercially. You can get, a contractor can come in and do the hempcrete, or the builder can also do the hempcrete walls. but also, there are uh, increasingly owner builders uh, wanting to do the hempcrete walls themselves uh, because they can. And it's great to have that involvement in the construction of a house. Uh, and a couple of times we've um, yeah, friends and family have come in and, and helped out. And it's really great um, to um, have that, that sense of place and community building relationships uh, teaching people about natural building materials and uh, how they can build more sustainably, people working together. Um, and when you have a finished house, the house already has a story. It has a history. It has a connection to people and a connection to place. And that's just a really, really fantastic sort of intangible thing that um, natural building can sort of often bring to, to a house, it's no longer just some impersonal built in impersonal building. Um, it's it's sort of a, a lived in structure right from the start with people's sort of heart and sweat in it. Um, one of the other great things about hempcrete is it's really flexible in terms of its styling. Um, you don't have to have, you don't, you can't sort of look at a building and say, oh, that's a hempcrete building. Like, you know, they all look the same. So you can have like a traditional cottage looking building. You can have a very modern contemporary looking building. Um, here you can even see they've actually put a timber cladding over the top of the hempcrete. Um, that's located in a um, heritage area in Kyneton in Victoria. Um, and so you can either have basically the walls will take the shape of your formwork. So you can either have really crisp, sharp corners, or you can have a, a very sort of um, soft curve type building. Uh, this is a, a beautiful contemporary house, which is done by one of our members, uh, Pat Swain from Kuma, uh, and some really beautiful work there, very contemporary house. Uh, this is my first hempcrete house that I built, uh, which I'm super proud to say I won a 2015 Building Designers Award for. Uh, and uh, we have another one of our members, Tracy Graham. Uh, she also won a Marrickville Council Award 
for uh, this is our hempcrete extension in Marrickville. Uh, we also have the very talented Balanced Earth uh, Building from the North Coast, who've won quite a few awards with their hempcrete buildings. Um, so you can see really beautiful sort of contemporary work there, uh, some exposed uh, hempcrete as well. Uh, and uh, I know I've sort of gone a little bit over time. Thank you for starting me early. Um, but if you want to find out further about hempcrete, uh, there's some just some resources that are available, a um, couple of good books to have a look at. The Hempcrete book by William Stanix and Alex Sparrow, uh, that's from the UK. Another great one, Essential Hempcrete Construction, that's from Canada. That's a really clear, easy to read sort of guide. If you want to learn more about um, some of the uh, science behind it, uh, some of the book, well, books on the bottom there are, are quite useful. Uh, so that's me. Uh, thank you very much for your time this evening. And I hope you've learned something about hempcrete. And I hope you'll now consider in the future when you're looking at what building materials um, you might consider hempcrete. If your clients are looking at building out of something a little bit more natural and sustainable, you'll consider uh, suggesting that to them. If any, if I, I don't know if I have any time for questions. Yes. Thanks a lot, Kirsty. We've got some, some questions there. Uh, how is the UV stability of, of hempcrete? Uh, I haven't actually looked into the actual UV. I've not known that it's ha had any issues with um, UV breakdown. Um, I've certainly had it left unrendered for a long, uh, externally for a long period of time and certainly can be left unrendered internally. Generally in Australia, I would render it externally because there are small voids uh, in the hemp and you just don't want little spiders living in every little nook and cranny of your <laughs> the outside of your house. Um, but so I, as I said, I don't really know the details of it, but I've not had any issues with, with UV being a problem. Okay, great. Uh, another question is hemp expensive to build with? Uh, in terms of that, um, uh, it's about similar to brick veneer. So when I certainly did my build, I did some actual detailed cost analysis comparing it per square metre to building materials. It certainly was more expensive than a clad house, um, but not as expensive as double brick. Came in around about brick veneer. Okay. And Another so question. Oh, sorry. Interestingly, recently I had a builder who was quoting um, for a hempcrete place and we had a subcontractor do a quote for the hempcrete and he was actually quite surprised sort of, you know, how cost competitive that was. So that was really, really handy helping having that come from a, a builder <laughs> looking yeah. at that. So, and the other, another question, which I think you've explained anyway, it says, you know, who, who would I get to install? And obviously you said the builder and the people are doing it themselves. So. Yeah. So in, in terms of that, um, there's a, a company in Sydney, Hempline Construct, who basically are subcontractors. So they will actually either do cast on site or the spray hemp and they can actually, they'll just come in as a subcontractor to your builder and be able to do that. Uh, alternatively, there are a number of uh, hemp creek builders. Uh, there's Belubula Hemp Homes um, who specialise in doing hemp. Uh, there's a few other uh, hemp builders who specifically have been doing that in and around Sydney um, and other builders who will just yeah, get a subcontractor in. Um, and sometimes uh, owners are wanting to do it themselves and will do it as owner builder. So there are a variety of options there. And the fact that you can get a subcontractor to come in just really means that your builder uh, can sort of say, okay, I'll just get a quote and um, do it for the hempcrete. Fantastic. So another couple of questions still to go. <laughs> oh. Sorry. How durable is hempcrete against water penetration uh, with uncoated surfaces? Yep. So in terms of that, um, they've done. They did some testing uh, in the UK, where basically they had a high pressure hose, effectively sort of spraying against it for seventy two hours. Um, there, there was a little bit of water penetration, but I mean that was an extreme sort of test there. But normally, what would happen is if the outer layer gets a little bit damp, it will dry out. Um, so certainly that testing has been done. Uh, interestingly, when I was I, I did my own hempcrete house, which was my introduction to all of this. Uh, I did that as owner builder. And so it took quite some time um, to actually sort of get it all finally rendered. So 
for about a year and a half, I had an unrendered wall underneath a downpipe with no downpipe on it. <laughs> and uh, I had no weathering happening there. So um, I was pretty happy about that, um, even though, yeah, <laughs> it was That's an good. unintended experiment. <laughs> And we've got the last question for you from Steve. He's saying, thanks, Kirsty. Do you recommend building the roof before or after creating the hempcrete walls? Look, I tend to put the roof on first because it gives you a, a sheltered area to work underneath. Um, but uh, another builder, James Isaacs from Belobula Hemp Homes, he actually prefers to put the, the roof on later. Mm. Um, it, it basically just means you've got easier access for the walls. So, I think what you'd have to have a look at is what is your time frame for building? What is your climate and what time of year do you anticipate doing the hemp? And how long do you think it's going to take you to do your walls when you're considering whether you'd put the roof on first or not? Yeah, and then look, I think if, you, if you're a construction company you wanting to build it, you want to get those walls up as quick as you can before the roof goes on for, for I guess, easy access into all those areas. Yep. So thanks very much, Kirsty.